Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we love you. Thank you truly. We thank you so very much that we are graced and blessed to be able to be here this morning. We are appreciative that we get to spend time together and spend time with you because, yes, you are here with us today. We appreciate that you want to come be with us, that you want to come dwell amongst these broken vessels. We thank you for that, that you want to even be in us today. We love you and thank you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. So yes, today is the fifth day of revival. And it was so awesome to see each day coming together and unfolding, each message being delivered, and, and seeing how they all tied in together. Well, today we're talking about the pinnacle experience. And I'm going to go ahead and read you a passage of, passage of Scripture and, I, and then I'm going to explain and define what the pinnacle experience is. But let's go to Matthew 4, starting in verse 1. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. And I mean, let me stop right there and let me tell you. I, the most I've ever fasted before without food was three days, and I was hungry. Can you imagine? Can you imagine another 30, 37 on top of that? I can't. And it says, it had to say, afterward he was hungry. I think we all gathered that. But can you imagine how hungry he really was? So this next point, you can really see how it was a temptation. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. Basically saying, you don't need to be hungry. You're the Son of God. You can turn these stones into bread right now. It ain't no thing for you. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Amen. Do you live that way today? Yeah. Can you? It, has God's word become your daily bread? I pray it has. Some of y'all do read those daily breads back there. But, if you do not, you are malnourishing your spirit. Amen. Some of you are walking around defeated as Christians because you are not nourishing your spirit that helps you fight back against those temptations that come against you. Right. Do you know that Jesus was fed during those 40 days? But He wasn't fed with natural food. He was fed with spiritual food. That's how he was able to fight off the temptations of the devil. Some of us think that, oh, it's Jesus. He was just going to defeat it. and you know Everything that came across, he, there, there was going to be no problems. Well, Jesus was tempted too. But it was because he set his mind, his priorities in order, he was able to defeat those temptations. Because he knew that if he got his life right with God and he kept that daily bread in him, the, the spiritual food, that Word of God in him, he would defeat every temptation. And he did that as an example to us to follow after his footsteps so that we could defeat every temptation that the devil throws at us. Do you know that it is possible to fight against the devil? to defeat the devil when he comes against you. You don't have to succumb to the temptations that come against you. You don't have to give in to them. That's what he wants you to think. But if you follow after Jesus' example, you will win. God gives you that outline today. Then the devil took him up into the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, 
He shall give His angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Do you know that He's quoting Scripture here? The devil is quoting Scripture to Jesus to try to get Him twisted in His mind. He's trying to get Him... He's using just enough truth to twist to try to get Him to fall into temptation. He'll do the same thing with you too. He might even use the Word of God to you to get you to, to feel like it's okay to do a certain sin out there. But you know what? If it don't line up with the Word of God, no matter how much it's twisted, you better go with what God actually says. Don't listen to those lies of the devil. But listen to what Jesus did again. Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. He's saying, yeah, what you said is written. But you're twisting it out of context. You're trying to deceive me. It's also written, and that's what we need to do as well when we try to justify any sin that we try to do. It is also written, is what we need to do, that I shouldn't do this or that. Amen. That's what Jesus did. That's what Jesus said to the devil. And if you notice here, he's not arguing. He's not arguing with the devil. He's telling him how it is. He's telling him the Scripture. He's quoting the Scripture. Matter of fact, in Ephesians 6, it says that the sword is the Word of God. The Word of God is the sword. And that's how we fight back. That was what Jesus was doing in the spiritual realm. He was fighting against the devil with the Word of God. How often do we do that? When we get those temptations come in our mind, what do we do? Do we entertain those thoughts? Or do we rebuke them in the name of Jesus? Quote the Scripture against what that temptation is. That's what we need to do and that's how we will be victorious as Christians in our walk if we do that and follow after Jesus' example. Thank you that He has given us an example to follow. Again, the devil's not done with him yet. Again, the devil took him on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written you shall worship the Lord your God, and Him only you shall serve. Amen. 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 Only God. Only the true God. He said, away with me, Satan. He was tired of it. Get away from me, Satan. You ever say that? You ever say that? I hope so. When you're faced with a temptation, you ever say, away from me, Satan? What if it's something you really like? You say, away from me, Satan. Or do you say, come on. Come on, Satan, let's hang out. Let's hang out, buddy. A lot of us do that. A lot of us have done that. We say, let's be friends. We don't think of it that way, but that's what we do every time we sin. We're hanging out with the devil. We don't think of it that way, but that's what we're doing. You know that the Bible says not to be friends with the world? You know, those who are friends with the world are at enmity with God or against God. The, God says that He doesn't want to be friends. He doesn't want us to be friends with the world. He doesn't want us to be friends with the devil. He wants us to be friends with Him. Right? Who wants to be a friend of God? Yeah. I know I do. But then after all of that, then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. I'm going to speak on that in a minute, but let's look at Luke 4.13. It also records this little extra tidbit. Now when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Y'all know what that means? Until a time that it was more easier to tempt him to a time that was just right. You know that sometimes the devil does that to us as well? He sets up situations in our lives 
that He can come in and know that we will be at our most vulnerable so that we will succumb to those temptations. That is the pinnacle experience. Sometimes we will be faced with those high and lofty temptations that will come. But what will we do with that? You know that the devil doesn't show back up again until chapter 16 in Matthew. When Jesus rebukes Peter, Peter tries to tell him, No, no, you don't need to die. You don't need to die. But Jesus knew who was behind that. See, he didn't rebuke Peter. He rebuked Satan who was using Peter to get to Jesus. Do you know that Satan will still do that today? He will use your family members, your closest to you, your friends, whoever he can to get to you. If he can't get to you directly, he goes to the next one. Do you see what happened there? When he was fasting 40 days and 40 nights, the devil went directly to Jesus. Couldn't get him. Failed. Then, the next time we see him show up, he's going to the next one closest to Jesus. Peter. The apostle who loved Jesus. He used him to try to get Jesus to mess up. To try to fall. He'll do the exact same thing to you. And if you let it happen, it's going to happen. And he'll know. He'll know how to get you next time too. All I got to do is go to that family member who can get you. But you have to be wise. You have to know that that's going to happen. So when you see the situation, ooh, this seems like an attack from the devil. You know, sometimes people who are around me, I will rebuke Satan. And they get mad at me and think, whoa, whoa. Why are you rebuking me? You know, I'm not rebuking you. I'm rebuking Satan who is using you. You might have to do the same thing. We should be accepting of that, right? But let's look at the definition of pinnacle. Some of us don't know what that word means. That's a weird word, right? Pinnacle? What does that mean? A structure or formation suggesting the pinnacle... Specifically, a lofty peak. So something really high up, okay? The highest point of development or achievement. The best or most important part of something. The point of greatest success or achievement. Okay? So keep that in mind as we continue this study this morning. But we are all faced with the, ex the pinnacle experience. A high and lofty temptation of some kind. We're all faced with it. A high chance for failure or a high chance of success depending on which route you take. Am I going to give in or am I going to fight against it? Do you know how awesome it will be when we get to heaven and God says, do you, I want you to see something. Check this out. Do you remember when you were struggling? Do you remember when you were going through that hard trial, that temptation? The devil was actually attacking you then. And guess what? You defeated him. You did. You stood your ground. You fought against him. You were victorious. Just like Jesus was. Wouldn't that be such an awesome thing to hear from God? Amen. That we specifically conquered, defeated the devil who was coming against us. But we have to fight. We have to. We can't be weaklings because we are in a spiritual war and it is waging all around us and we can't think just the things that we see is all because there's another layer underneath all of that, the spiritual realm, and there is a constant war going on. So we have to fight against it. We have to fight against the devil and may not always be just the devil, but he's got many a minions out there working for him. A lot of demons. And you better believe they're at work. You know, I've heard many people say, I don't want to attribute everything to the devil. And that's true. 
But guess what? We don't attribute enough. We think he ain't really attacking. Well, he is all the time. And guess what? If you're directly involved in serving God in any kind of way, you better believe it's coming at you times two. He's going to come at those who are truly faithful. He's going to come at those who are really serving God. So if you ever decide to get your life truly right with God and you ever decide, hey, I'm going to really do this. I'm really going to be a true Christian. I'm not going to just say I'm a Christian, but I'm going to be a true Christian. Guess who's coming? He's going to come. But guess what? That gives you an opportunity. You will be faced with the pinnacle experience, either high chance of failure or high chance of success. I'm going to try for that success. Right? Amen. Although Jesus was tempted greatly, let's look at what did come from it. So Jesus fasted 40 days and nights and was tempted. At the end of such a hard thing, Let's see what God did. Matthew 4.11 again. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Do you know that that's not a thing just for Jesus? That can be a thing for us as well. Can you believe, though, that angels ministered to Jesus? They uplifted Him and encouraged Him. I bet God does the same for us. Let's look at this other scripture. Hebrews 13, 2. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by so doing, some have unwittingly entertained angels. Isn't that awesome? God tells us that there might be a point in time when we come across a stranger who is actually an angel in disguise. Isn't that something interesting? I bet we will be shocked when we get to heaven to find out how many times God sent angels to us to minister to us after we overcame those temptations. And that's the key. That is something that we must do overcome the temptation just as Jesus did. And then when we do, I believe God might send us an angel to comfort us in some kind of way. Give us an encouraging word. Uplift us. Help us back on our feet. Have you ever thought that you've entertained angels before? There's been a couple times in my life that I've thought that. But we got to know the Scripture to know that that's possible, right? You know, we think of angels as these big white lights with wings and, and white flowing robes and things like that and swords. But sometimes they will come as to somebody looking just like me. Walk up to you and say, How are you doing today, sir? How are you doing today, ma'am? Well, whew, I've been going through a hard time. Been going through some struggles. But I think God just got out of them. I think I'm, 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 I think I'm in the clear now. <clears throat> well, guess what? You're going to get through it. God's got your back. You're going to be okay. It's going to be all right. And then you go, you go away from that feeling, feeling better. Man, it feels good. Some stranger just came up and comforted me. I bet you. Bet you it was an angel. Out of, out of the time you needed it the most, God sent him. Hey, go minister to my son. Go minister to my daughter. They need you now. Because that's what they are, ministering spirits. They come, they bring uplifting encouragement, a word of truth, a word of knowledge sent from God to you to help you. Let's go to Matthew 6.13. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. 
For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. We all say that prayer, don't we? The Lord's Prayer. Sometimes it, I say, but deliver us from evil, but here it says deliver us from the evil one, the devil. Right? Because he's coming. He's coming to attack. So Jesus said, this is the prayer I pray. This is the prayer you need to pray. Deliver us from the evil one. Lead us not into temptation. Right? You have to pray that prayer not just because you know you need to pray it. Not because it makes you feel good. Not because that's just what you've always done since you were a little kid. It's what you need to pray to fight against the evil one. It's what you need to pray to believe that God will deliver you from temptation if you let Him. Right? Sometimes we are our own worst enemies, aren't we? We say, temptation, come on! Don't we? Bring it my way. But no, we need to have the mentality of, Lord, lead us not into temptation. I don't want to be tempted. But if I am... Deliver me from the evil one. Amen. Deliver me from him. Help me fight against him. Because I don't want to give in to his traps. I don't want to give in to the, the devil's devices. I want to be victorious. Right? Amen. Yes. I want him to be the conquered one. I don't want to be the conquered one. Anybody have a fighting spirit inside of them? I know I do. I don't want to be defeated. Anybody in here like being defeated? I don't. So don't let the devil defeat you. And you know what? Sometimes he'll keep you defeated. And he'll make you think you can't ever win. But you can if you put your life and your trust in him. In Jesus Christ. And let me give you another encouragement. 1 Corinthians 10.13 No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. For one, he's saying, I'm not going to put on anything more than you can handle. I'm not going to allow the devil to tempt you more than what you can already defeat. Isn't that awesome? There's not been a single thing that you've gone through in this life that you couldn't overcome. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Amen. And that should be an encouragement. No matter if you failed a hundred times before this point today, now, whatever you're faced with, when you are faced with it, you're going to be victorious. Because I know that God did not send something to me that I couldn't handle. He sent something to me that I could vanquish, that I could accomplish, that I, that I could overcome. He sent something to me that I can be victorious today. No matter what it is, you have a death in the family, even if it's your daughter, even if you just had a newborn and they died, no matter what it is, God allowed it to happen to you because He knew you could be a winner today. He knew you would be victorious. No matter how hard it hurts. And some of them things can hurt bad. And sometimes we think, I can't bear this. But that's what the Scripture says. He won't send anything that you can't overcome. Thank you, Jesus. And then whatever temptation it is, whatever the devil's trying to tempt you with, He will provide a way that you may be able to escape. Or to be able to conquer it. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hebrews 12, 3-4 For consider Him who endured such hostility from sinners against Himself, talking about Jesus, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted the bloodshed striving against the sin. Have you? Has anybody came up to you with a knife and said, you better sin. I'm going to cut your throat if you don't sin. I bet you there's not a single person in this room that has that happen. And if there has, it's probably just one or two. 
because that's not a normal thing. I've never heard of it. I've never had anybody come up to me and said, somebody put a gun in my head and told me to, to lie. No, we just do it upon ourselves, don't we? Because we give in to that sin. Because we succumb to the devil's temptation. But God has said, you can fight against him. But will you? Will you fight? That's the question I want to ask you today. Will you fight against the devil? Or will you let him keep beating you up? I'm going to tell you one thing. He ain't going to throw more than one punch at me. Because I'm fighting back. Right? Amen. I don't care what you're dealing with. And there's all kinds of sins. It don't matter what it is, you can be victorious if you fight back. If you said, I had enough, I'm sick of it. I want what God wants for me. I'm tired of this world. I'm tired of the sin. I'm tired of the devil. I want Jesus. Right? Amen. When are you going to get sick of it? That's what it's going to take. You've got to get sick of the sin. You gotta get fed up and tired of it. You can't still want it. You can't still desire it. You gotta say, I want you. I desire you. I want your will, your word, your way. Not my own way anymore, but your way. And that's what we gotta do. And the pinnacle experience is a high chance of failure, but a high chance of reward. What will you do when you are faced with this? Isaiah 52, 7. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of Him who brings good news, who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, Your God reigns. How beautiful are your feet who spread the gospel. Are you going to spread the gospel with your life? I pray you do. Because there's another pinnacle experience. God will set you high up on a mountain and He will give you eternal life. He will give you happiness. He will give you joy. He will give you blessings. That's the pinnacle experience I look forward to. Psalm 48.2 Beautiful in elevation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. And Psalm 125.1 Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. He says those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. You will be uplifted. He will put you on the pinnacle. And finally, the pinnacle of all things is God and His way. Hebrews 12, 22-29 But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. To God the judge of all, to the spirits of the just men made perfect. Thank you, Jesus. To Jesus the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. See that you do not refuse Him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused Him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from Him who speaks from heaven. Don't turn away from Jesus today. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now He has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of the things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Thank you, Jesus. 
He's going to shake all things right down to the foundation, right, Cody? Sounds like I've heard this before. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, His heavenly, holy kingdom, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. We need to all have reverence for our God today. Because He is the Most High. He is the highest thing. He is the pinnacle of pinnacles. And that is our destination. We are to reach Him. Isn't that awesome? When we die, we get to go and be in God's presence. To see Him face to face. To see Him eye to eye. Do you have respect for that? Do you have respect for Him today? Or do you say that just when you're in here? Because He knows the difference. You can't fake Him out. You might can fake me out and everybody sitting around you. But He knows what you're going to do when you go home. He knows it before you even do. But what are you going to do when you go home? Are you going to serve Him with your life? Or are you going to serve yourself, the world, and the devil? I don't want to do that. I'm going to serve God with my life. Because Psalm 717, I will praise the Lord according to His righteousness and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. He is the one who sits higher than all of us. His ways are higher than our ways. He is greater than any of us. And I accept that fact. I relinquish my will to His will. I want what He has to offer. I bought it. I believe Him. I like it. I love it. And I want some more of it. Right? Amen. Amen. Anybody else there with me? Yeah. Amen. That's why I'm even doing what I'm doing today. That's why I even spent five days coming to church. because Not because I'm a pastor, but because I love Him first. Because I seek Him in everything I do to the best of my ability. And I pray you do too with your lives. Because that's what He wants from me. He demands a lot. He will allow pinnacle experiences to happen to you in your life. He will allow the devil to tempt you. But He knows that you're a winner. And He knows that you can conquer Him. He doesn't give you anything more than you can handle but He expects you to handle it. Right? Amen. He expects you to take care of business for Him. He expects you to fight against the devil. He expects a lot, but He gives a lot. He gives so much. We couldn't ever outgive Him, I'm going to tell you. He said, Any, okay, you want to give that much? I'm going to give you this much. And just knock you on your back because of how much He gives you. It will blow your mind. If you will just give Him your life, he will take it and make you something. He will make you something for Him. And that's, that's awesome to me. That's why I gave Him my life. Alright. Has anybody got anything out of these five days? Anything? <laughs> I pray to God that you have. I pray that you got some encouraging word that can carry you forth into this next week and for the rest of your lives that you can be victorious for the Lord, that you know that you are on the right side of things, that you can overcome. And I believe for great things for y'all. I believe that God is going to use you mightily. I believe it. If you've been coming, even if you only got to come one night or one day, I believe God wanted you to come so that He could pour something into you, so that He could pour something into your spirit, Something to help you with your mind, to help you with your life. And I believe it will help you to be victorious. Let's go ahead and close in prayer. Father, we love you and thank you so very much. Thank you for this day. Thank you that you are so good. Thank you for all your blessings. Thank you that we got to come to revival. That we were privileged with revival, Father. Thank you that you wanted to pour into us. 
that you wanted to uplift us, to encourage us, to help us in our walk with you. And Father, we're going to believe that you're going to be walking hand in hand with us on that road of life. And we thank you that you are with us today. And Father, thank you for, for all the other blessings that we may forget. Thank you for everything and thank you for being that good, good Father. In Jesus' holy name, Amen. Amen. Amen.